Dear friends, today we are conducting a live video interview with normal people on the streets of Yalta. We will be asking everyone what it means to be a true human being. Please tell us what a true human being is in your opinion. In my opinion, a true human being is someone with an open heart, someone who not only values themselves but also other people. An honest and sincere individual, someone who will always understand and be there for you. This is someone who loves everyone and the reality of his or hers entire surroundings. Creation and humanity cannot exist without this important feature. I suppose that a true human being is a primary role model. A true human should be a kind, decent, and a spiritual individual. A person like this should have developed family qualities. God didn't create us just to eat, drink, sleep, go to work, and breathe. God has created us so that we can create our family and protect our people. Being a true human being should imply an internal culture, motivating people to make better choices, have a positive view of the world, and it should teach all to see themselves in others. It is extremely difficult to currently find people like this. It is extremely difficult to find humane people. People, let alone true humans. I think spirituality should be the primary development above all other qualities. A true human being should strive towards higher spiritual objectives. What do you think it would take to become a true human? I don't think that anyone is initially born good or bad. However, an individual's behavioral patterns are embedded during childhood. It is necessary to learn how to cultivate these qualities within one's own self-consciousness. This is the primary reason why we have the notion to pertain continuous self-development. To develop the true human quality implies to enjoy everything you do, and to do everything you enjoy, regardless of an outside opinion. If parents teach their children these humane qualities such as love, tolerance, kindness and clemency, surely enough children will grow up to be good. If the desire is there, everyone can do it, because some people are perfectly okay with the way they are and do not want to change. I suppose the preconditions to become a true human being exists in everyone, and to become such a human is not only easy, but also desirable. I am sure everyone would feel better if we all made an attempt to understand each other. The only way to become a true human being is to understand others. That is simple. I am convinced that absolutely everyone can become a true human being. And the best way to become a true human being is to communicate with someone who has already become advanced in that direction. To uncover our inner potential is to be open and sincere with everyone. To become a true human probably requires being kind, tolerant, sympathetic, loving and forgiving. We all make mistakes in life, so forgiveness should be the leading quality in such an individual. A true human treats others the same way he or she wishes to be treated. Even the most great human being can pull himself together, look up at the sky and experience himself to be an indispensable part of the entire universe created by the Supreme Intellect. Question, speaking of a true human being, how would you describe the notion humanly love? It is forgiveness and tolerance. Love is a true state of happiness. It is the sincere and profound comprehension of others as well as self. In my opinion, love is caring, understanding and support. It is a desire to not only understand, but to also experience emotions of others. It is a very important emotion which sustains the humane qualities within all of us. Which role does intellectual development play in the life of a true human being? If an individual is intellectually challenged, he or she has quite a poor view of the world and is usually focused on entirely on survival issues. Without intellect, 
we are not able to realize the potential of our social responsibilities. I think that people should become polymathic and culturally advanced by reading a vast amount of diverse literature. When you communicate with people who are intellectually advanced, you also receive vital information. You will not be able to communicate with someone who is intellectually challenged in an equal manner. Therefore, when you read highly intellectual material, you will become smarter. It is important to read a lot and to have an exquisite mind. Intellectually advanced individuals have an entirely different mindset, which is usually aimed at a globally beneficial creation. And on the other hand, if a person is internally weak, his or her reasoning ability is aimed at division and destruction, and such an individual has a consumerist mindset. Would you always be able to identify an intellectually advanced individual as wise? Anyone can be wise while an intellectual could be foolish. Wisdom comes of age, with existential experience. Someone is only wise if they have extensive experience. If someone can divert his or her knowledge and comprehend to the benefit of others, then such a person can be considered wise, in my opinion. However, if he or she simply possess a lot of information, which does not really benefit anyone around him, this person is just an intellectual. Spirituality and high morality are qualities entirely different from scientific knowledge. If a person has a trade and is a mathematician or a physicist, it doesn't mean that he or she loves anyone except that particular field of study. A pure intellectual approach applied without sensuality can be different and often cynical. Therefore, it is great when at Advanced intellect goes hand in hand with advanced sensuality. Wisdom comes with experience, and after that, everything is learned in comparison. By comparing various situations, we become smarter and more wise, and then learn not to make the same mistakes along the road. True wisdom is the ability to understand others. If someone possesses intellectual abilities, he or she could be considered as someone who is constantly advancing in life and someone who is wise. How a person lives is above all a practical application of opportunities for manifesting kindness, unconditional love and the highest clemency. A true human will always stay in a state of responsibility as an individual, if he or she is continuously developing their intellectual abilities to its highest potential, even when mischievous actions or errors has occurred, that is someone else's fault. Such a highly responsible individual can steadily focus on the profound understanding of all the surrounding events and its true cause. A person like this always knows all the facts and knows that he or she is the true creator of their own destiny, and that there is nobody else to blame for spiritual aspirations or existent failures. By having self-control, courage and compassion as virtues that is nurtured in the fertile soil of higher love, altruism and intellect, it will be easier to overcome the apparent endless cycle of evil, lies, hypocrisy and condemnation. Being in a higher state of intellect implies the necessity of sharing one's own knowledge and comprehension with others, and then the profound quest for high-frequency energy. The exchange of mutual information becomes strong, existentially vital and objectively dispensable, but factually there is no way of escaping it by keeping the significant information secret and not sharing it with others. In this case, an internal collapse becomes imminent along with the complete loss of the meaning of life and the purpose of self-existence. Harmonizing the essence of advanced altruism and intellect brings a transformation of advanced wisdom where the creative dynamics are not in inactive with rhetoric and lofty matter. 
others, neither far-fetched, contrived or ambitious, mind games or sympathetic people, but on the fact that it is simply impossible for you to live and act otherwise. According to his ideology, consistently manifesting altruism inevitably elevates the quality of your existence and purposefully refocusing you into more favorable existential conditions where opportunities for high-frequency self-expression exists in abundance. The choices we make dictate the life we lead. William Shakespeare. Our choices attract the corresponding existential circumstances. So be natural and live boldly. Shine brighter. Create your life consciously in a more positive and exciting manner, generously and liberally sharing your love and spiritual joy that you have received from altruistic and intellectual gifts of others. Then soon enough, you will experience yourself living in a society where everyone can be defined as a true human being.